guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Joni Young, if you're new here, and I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to paint this fantasy landscape today in acrylic. Um, all I've got is an older canvas here. You can use a white canvas, a brand new canvas, doesn't matter. I've got a large blending brush. This one happens to be a number 50 filbert, and you can see I've got a canvas here that's gray, but it's different tones. So all I've done is take a little bit of white and a bit of black here, and all I do is just sort of crisscross just to get a full coverage onto this canvas. This will create a really nice underpainting for all the pretty soft colors, some brighter neons that we're gonna to incorporate today. So gray underpaintings look awesome. There's just something kind of magical about a gray underpainting, priming a canvas gray that really, really complements and makes all the colors come together so nicely. So you're gonna learn a lot today in this video. Stay tuned, hit that subscribe, and let's begin. All right, so I've got a few colors here chosen for this painting today. Um, at this point, I don't really know exactly what I'm gonna paint. If you're new to my channel, this is kind of my thing. This is how I paint. I really enjoy the um, spur of the moment, intuitive style of painting, and I like to uh, explain my process step-by-step -step with you guys along the way. So I've got, let's start over here, turquoise, aqua green, cadmium yellow, light hue. We've got neon orange, neon rose, a little bit of Mars black, phthalo blue, green gold, and titanium white. Now, of course, you can use any other variations of these colors if you don't have these specific ones, um, but we've got quite a few here to play around with and have fun with. So I'm gonna start the first step by taking this filbert brush, and I'm just gonna turn the canvas a little towards me here so I can kind of see what I'm doing a little bit better and so that you guys can see as well. So I'll just get my brush a little bit wet and I'm going to start with taking a little bit of my neon orange, a little bit of white. So for your rainbow colors on a darker primed canvas like this, you're going to want to add a little bit of white too so that it, it shows up. So I'm, hmm, I'm just going to go for it. Feels right, right about here. And I'm starting with orange and you'll see why make a little bit thicker then i'm going to go into my neon rose a little bit of white a little bit of that orange and we can make a really pretty bright reddish color and if it's not bright enough we can always add a little bit of scarlet red or neon red and i like to play around and see what colors i can make by um, mixing on my own first I'm just going to wash all of that paint out of my brush. I'm going to take a little bit of my cab yellow light hue, a little bit of white. Make sure you don't have water in your brush. A little bit's okay, like if your brush is a little bit damp, that's fine, right? But you don't want it to be dripping. And I'm going to just line it up partially on the orange, push, and then pull and flick off. I'm going to just go up here again. and then pull out. We're gonna cover up all the edges, right? So it doesn't really matter what they look like. Now with a clean brush, I'm gonna go into my turquoise, bit of white. Now I've got lots of videos on painting rainbows. I absolutely love rainbows as do most people. And they're really simple. You just need to have the right idea for placement and the overlapping. So every time you add a color, you're gonna slightly overlap it on the existing one. So it's a good idea to add your colors a little bit thicker because you wanna have that extra bit of room there to overlap with your next color. Now, I'm not gonna wash this turquoise out of my brush. I'm gonna go right into my blue, a little bit of white, a little bit of turquoise have a really pretty soft blue color here. Again, I'm gonna go over part of that turquoise, pull and flick. Now I'm gonna wash that turquoise blue out. And I'm gonna take some of this really pretty 
rose, a little bit of phthalo. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Okay, I'm ready to begin. I'll take a little bit more of my turquoise and go right over the top. I'll wash all of the paint out of my brush. Okay, my brush is clean. I'm just gonna pull very lightly. Just to soften that, now I'm gonna go into white, only white. And my brushes, I can see these little bubbles kind of happening. That means that I've got too much water in my brush. So I'm just gonna wipe the excess off on a towel I've got here. Kind of work that out of my brush. Maybe grab a little bit more paint. We really want to have a dry brush and I'm just going to go right under and it's just going to make this glow. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is just have a few lines with that watered down thin white. And it's just going to give us the faint idea, you know, that there's a little bit of rain back in the distance. I accidentally went over that a little bit, that's okay. Then we can take those rainbow colors and add them down here too if we want. Let's go ahead and do that. I just saw a little bit because I picked up some here accidentally. And then I brush down here and I got a little glimpse of that and I think that's really pretty. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Add those colors, a little bit of orange. Not as lined up as everything up there. I don't wanna worry about lining anything up too much and making a mirror. I just wanna reflect the pretty colors And then a little bit of blue. And I brought this blue around here because I'm going to pick up some of this rose right away. I'm just incorporate that right there. Let's add a little bit of white. And just carefully pull that through. There, I think that's quite pretty. I think I'm missing a little bit of red. I did orange, yeah, I did pretty much all the colors except for that red that I made, so let's make some of that. It's kind of a rusty red. You can use any red you want. Scarlet would be a good one, even crimson. So let's take a little bit of this now. Barely touch the canvas. Just wisp, little wispy lines, brush strokes. To take a little bit of yellow in there. I feel like I just need a little bit more gradation there. Gives it a little bit of an extra pop and glow. So I've got an oval mop brush. It's kind of losing its shape a little bit. It was squished in my little drawer. Um, just wiggle it out a little bit. But this is a one inch Princeton oval mop. These are really nice brushes. And what I want to do here is just take, I'm not going to get it wet. I'm going to take a little bit of my green gold and a little bit of this Mars black here. I want to create a little bit more of a contrast shadow and depth first. Got a bit of orange there on the bottom. That's okay. And let's start adding some bushes along here.
pick up a little bit more of that green gold. Just pull out a little bit. I'm going to take a little bit of white cadmium yellow and those colors and add a little bit of a highlight here now. So I'm just going to line it up partially and do all these little taps. This is because this is a one inch um, that I happen to be using. Don't think that you can't uh, use a smaller or larger brush. So you definitely can. Right here, I've got a nice bright peachy color I made for my um, rainbow, for my reflections. I'm going to use that with my lighter area here that I made with my green gold and add a little bit more highlights. And it's a little bit brighter. And there's a hint of that peachiness in there, that warmth. I haven't decided what we're going to have in here. Maybe we've got a little, maybe there's a little archway, a little grassy area right here with this little pond or a little lake. It's so fun to make up these worlds. If you guys have never painted this way before, I really encourage it. Here we go. I have trouble finding my flat brush. This is a number eight Pro Stroke by Pro Stroke Power Krill. And what I want to do is just get my brush a little bit wet. And you guys know I love staircases. So I see a little spot that's just calling me for a staircase. And I feel like it's right in here. So I'm going to start going to make a little line like this. And then I'm going to pull it over this way. And then here I make them smaller and smaller. one that comes down right about here. Now you can't see it that well yet because it's dark in here, but if we take a little highlight, a little bit of our highlight color here, right? We can just make these stand out. And who knows where it goes? It just leans off up there somewhere. I'm just going to go back down here with my filbert brush. I think it might be kind of pretty to add uh, a little bit of that peachy color we've got. Maybe pull into this highlight color with a bit of that green gold. So green gold, orange, peachy mixture. And I want to take most of that out of my brush so it's pretty dry, right? I'm going to turn my brush like this. Scumble really quickly. Just around the base here. And I just want to create like a shoreline, right? A soft beachy area here. So in order to make it look like there's maybe just some gentle waves in here, what I'm going to do is take a little bit of white, maybe, hmm, maybe a little turquoise, a little bit of yellow. Let's see where this gets us. Just on the tip of my brush here, really doing this shaky. And then just a little pull and sweep. That kind of gives us the feeling of little waves, doesn't it? A little bit of movement anyway, so that we know it's water. And over here, or maybe even here, 
we could have some clouds, just some little scoops like this. I think this rainbow is pretty dry. So just these sort of squiggly lines, right? My, my rainbow's a little bit wet still, but it's gonna help me get that fuzzy blurry look that I like at the end of a rainbow, how it kind of just disappears off. And then I'm gonna just line my brush up here, pull, maybe add just a little bit. A little bit like this on the tip of my brush and make these little scoops line it up you can turn your brush like this as well now these can either be it could be a rainfall or it could be some soft sun rays after the storm a little bit more of that color Bit more of that peachy color. Add that there. Now I'll put rainbows drying a little bit more. I think it would be kind of fun to add just a little hint of um, lightning. So I'm going to go for my small little liner brush here. This is a number one by Princeton as well. And let's see, a little bit of, I've got a little hint of that cadmium yellow with that white in there, but you really don't, you can even pick up a little bit of that violet color, just any pastel color you want. I'm gonna get a little bit of water on there just to loosen it up a little bit more. Roll and twist my brush. And maybe, maybe just without thinking too much about it. Oh, somebody was asking me to do a lightning painting, something with a with a lightning in it. And I've got a f I've got a few. If you go back far enough on my channel, I've got quite a few uh, videos. I'll just do a few little scoops like this, and then I'm going to go in and soften that. Got a dry filbert here. It's a good idea to have a lot of different brushes on hand, the same kind of brush, different sizes, multiples, so that you can always have a dry one when you need it because it, you won't get the same effect when using a wet brush for everything. Sometimes you need a dry brush, sometimes you need a wet brush. I'm just gonna have a little bit. I'm using my pinky here to steady my hand. Wiggling. Think about it's like painting branches, those really crooked branches, especially those like on cherry blossom trees that we paint. And then just a little soft pull to the side like that again. Now I want to work more on this area here and just add some more life, some maybe some trees and foliage. Um, if you're a part of the Facebook group, then you know that I'm going to be going on a little trip to Victoria in Canada and visiting the Bouchard Gardens. And so I think that's kind of in the back of my mind right now, and it's playing a role in this. Not that I want it to be stormy <laughs> when I go, but um, the staircase. If you haven't seen Bouchard Gardens, it's world famous. And they've got this really long, you can see it on Pinterest, or Pinterest, this really long staircase that goes 
up and up and up and up and up really high and then all these beautiful flowers just mounds and mounds of every flower you can think of so right there I just used a little bit of yellow turquoise and white and I think I'm going to start painting some more foliage I've got another mop brush here. This is one of the makeup brushes that I get on Amazon, and they're really awesome. I love to paint little bushes with these. They just make the perfect bush shape. So I'm just going to start right underneath there. I'm going to follow my staircase. I'm not going to forget about that area there. I think that is a little secret entrance to somewhere. Let's do a little bit of black now. Just a little bit. Add a little bit more depth on this side. I've got a lot in there, so let me just balance that out. Maybe throw in some yellow and white. Just little taps. And I'm in a whimsical kind of a mood, so I can see this kind of getting a really flowy, curvy feel to it. I'm just going to keep going around. Let's just see where this takes us. I'm going to turn. It's kind of flat, right? So when I push, I'm not doing straight on. I'm pushing down a little bit like this. Now what I want to do, tap, pull and flick. Create these little vines hanging. Add a little bit more. I'm looking a little bit more see-through than I'd like them to be. Get a little bit more loaded up there on my brush. Have this part coming down a little bit lower. And let's add a bit of a highlight. We'll go into our cab yellow, a little bit of white. Pick up a little bit more. See how I just kind of wiggle, smush it in there. And let's just start just adding it partially on top and right above. And it's going to come way over here. Right off the canvas, this probably goes around like that. We can't see it all. See how the colors just pop off this gray background? And especially, it's really handy when you're creating a, a moody sky, stormy type of a sky. Gonna make it kind of just start to disappear over there. And then I just when I thought I wanted it to kind of disappear, I'm just gonna go up 
from the very top. And then I think I want to have, I'm going to make it a little bit darker right here. sort of coming down a few little vines and then I'll add a little bit of land right in here in the distance Kind of just joins so it all just wraps around together here. Well, this is really starting to come together. I'm getting uh, more ideas with each brush stroke I make. I got a little bit of highlights now, and I'm gonna have to wash this brush out soon before this paint starts drying in it. Oh, just a few little bits of highlights here. Okay. Start adding more lines for my stairs. Just a little indication there. Some of these I'll just take a little bit of black. well I want to add a little bit more highlights here so I'm going to take my angle I have an angle mop brush as well. Kind of gives me more of control here in this narrow area. So I'm just going to start tapping right alongside and then kind of turning and pulling. I'm going to take a little bit more of my black and green gold. I'm going to add a little bit more to that, but right now I'm really envisioning some waterfalls. And I really like using an angle brush for waterfalls, so I'm going to show you guys and I'll demonstrate using uh, these. And I'm not just going to use straight white, I'm going to add a little bit of purple by taking my violet and blue. And maybe we'll just start a fantasy painting right you could do anything you want we've got some trickling down here I don't even care if it picks up a little bit of that green or yellow 
I think it's pretty. See how pretty it is to have that though? I think this waterfall is just come right down here. See, I even pulled in a little bit accidentally of that wet um, paint, the black there, but it looks pretty. It all just flows so nicely together. Where else could we have one? Maybe a little bit more right in here. I know it'll dry darker, so I really want to make sure that I add a little bit more white to some areas so that they really stand out. See how there's so many different levels and they're going different ways. And then I can turn it like this. And maybe we could have one that drops right down here. Or I'll have one that starts to drop. Whoops, a little bit too much blue there. I don't want to have that much blue. I'd rather have more of a purple mauve color. Drops here, then we have a little pool. We're just adding a little bit of magic all over. See how much you can change and how quickly you can change the vibe of a, of a painting. And waterfalls are one of the easiest things to paint. You can make shaky ones coming down. You can just go right over top of the rainbow with them as well. Maybe the that rainbow's behind some waterfalls. I am gonna do a light wash over this and give this rainbow a nice soft glow and put it back and make it look a little bit hazy. I'm just gonna get my brush a little bit wet, loosen that paint out of there, and then come in with a little bit of this purple color. I can tie this in. And then I didn't mean for that to happen, but I can fix that. Just stumble that upward, push it off. I'm gonna add some light in here. Let's make this area inviting. There's a little light on. And can you wonder what's in there? Just a little bit inside. And then cast a little bit of light right in here. I'm going to take a little bit of black. And just make this more visible. As an archway. And little entrance. And I'm just going to add a little bit. Of that leftover black on my brush along the edge here. And tap and dab some more light. sure this is dry and it is so I can start adding um, 
a nice layer of kind of white tinted. Just tint it slightly with that blue and violet. And I'm going to start I think I'm going to need a different brush. This is leaving too much of a texture, so I'm going to use I'm going to use my damp. It's just a little bit damp. I don't want to leave brush strokes or create any streaks. I'm just out to uh, create a, a bit of a mist. This is going to prevent the rainbow from drying and dulling too dark. Even though I've got those neons in there, it could still dry a little bit on the dark side. And it's just going to make it look softer. Because rainbows are very, very soft looking, right? I want them to come right down to the water here. Well, we could maybe a little bit of that peach color too. Maybe right in here. Got the hint of some sunlight coming in. with this brush, add a few more waterfalls, make that pretty mauve color again, that lilac -y color, and turn it this way, have some that are just trickling out. brush is a little bit too dry so when that happens you just pick up a little bit more water make sure you get the right ratio in there you don't want it to be too uh, watery otherwise they're, they're gonna look bright when you first put it on but as it dries it's gonna dull and get darker You know that beautiful mist and spray you get off of waterfalls? This is painting this mist back here in these rays, kind of is giving it that feeling, I think. It's going to take a little bit 
of my white and yellow here. And very lightly. Go over just part of the that lightning there. Oops, dropped a little bit too much. So just uh, any highlight color that you want, any pastel color, and just make this really stand out a little bit more. And here we've got a, here we've got A little castle. Just make little peaks, little triangles, skinny triangles on the tops. And then we can take a little bit of any dark color. Maybe a little bit of purple. Mix it in with a little bit of green. Switch over to a really small zero filbert brush. Take a little bit of my white. And just add a little bit more to the tops of these here. And then a little bit of a highlight. While the paint is still a little bit wet, you can kind of play around with it. I had a few little windows. I'm just going to make a dark color with my blue, green, purple, and maybe a little shadow here underneath. Little dabs for windows. A little bit of yellow and green gold in there to create grassy area. Gonna go back to my liner brush, take a little bit more white, add these little lines that go underneath. Just get a little bit of white on the tip of my brush to do this and just pull, pull, pull little lines. And then add a little highlight inside. This is going to make them look, give them more of a rounded look and 3D look. And then I think we've got a little flag. Actually, that looks a little bit too much like a, a chimney, like smoke coming into a chimney. So let me just quickly get that off.
I think I'm just gonna get rid of that all together. So you could add a, a little flag if you wanted. I think I'm just gonna leave it as is. And I'm gonna go back into my white here. Just gonna add a little line outline here to some of these windows. This is gonna also make them stand out. And then a little bit of that white over top. You could use a filbert or a little mop brush for this if you want. Just to highlight that a little bit. And then I'm going to go to my little flat brush here. This is a number eight. Any smallish size will do. I'm going to make my mauve color again and continue with these little waterfalls because I just think this is fun and magical looking with all these waterfalls coming down. A little bit more white in there. Make them stand out a little bit more. See, they're just so faded, we don't see everything. It's just an illusion and a suggestion that they're back there. And go right into my cad yellow green gold and maybe just add a little bit more in here for some bushes i've got a little mop brush like a mini little mop brush here that i think i'm gonna do a few more controlled little bushes and trees that come up Along the side, I just want to have this more nestled in. So let's add a little bit more black to that. And add some of these. dangling vines and then most of that's out of my brush so I can make a highlight color now a little bit of cadmium yellow and white you could do green gold yellow and white as well now you don't need to highlight everything you just want to pick a few spots that'll have the light hitting Maybe there's some greenery back there that we can't see, right?
I'm going to finish off this painting with a few more soft sun rays, flat brush, yellow, a little bit of that neon orange. A little bit like that, and then I had a few flowers down here. And I'm just going to use another little, uh, this is a hmm, oval mop brush, a mini one. And uh, let's see, I've got quite a bit of this beautiful, well, just enough of this rose. So I can take some of this and I can just start tapping in some of these gorgeous wild roses. I'm going to say they are. You can paint any flowers that you want. Don't want mine to be roses. Roses are my favorite. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of white. And just push tap. And this is going to ensure some lighter and areas once it dries. So I'll have some dark shadows for some of the petals. Lots of highlights and shadows and different colors. And I'm just going to have it start to trail off and fade away into the foreground here. And then with whatever's on, left on my brush here, you can see right here, I just need to pull, pull a little bit of that in. And then just graze over a little bit right there. Okay, so this painting is all done. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this one and I hope you get inspired. There's lots to learn in this video today and I hope that you picked up some tips and tricks that you maybe haven't before. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, give this video a like and leave a comment or question below. I'm always happy to connect with my viewers and subscribers. Thanks again for watching everybody. I'll see you soon in another video. Take care. Bye.